What's up Tube Tube? Welcome back to the Guido's Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster channel on the tubes. And tonight we have a Wells Honey Badger on the bench. And uh, this is the first time, uh, in fact this is the first time I've seen any of the new series of Wells. Um, just because, I don't know, it's just the way it's been. I haven't, I haven't really uh, got around to getting hands on any of them for whatever reason. I don't know why, but here we are. This is the Wells Honey Badger. Um, out of the box, looks quite good. It's got pretty nice nylon construction. The uh, details here on the on the fire select are quite nice. It's got a nice clicky fire select, which is always good. The uh, the stippling on the pistol grip is, is like no other I've ever touched before. It's like it welds itself to your palm when you grab it. It's uh, very interesting. Um, the alloy handguard here, it's an M-Lock handguard, some sort of uh, interesting attaching mechanism there. It's uh, an interesting sort of almost a rose gold anodized color it uh, is sticks out a little bit from the um, drab of the uh, rest of the blaster but um, nonetheless a nice alloy handguard um, we've got the uh, three position pistol brace on the back and I imagine that the battery is going to be in here somewhere Battery's already been put in here, uh, but not plugged in. There we go. It's a 11 volt battery, and it comes with the mini Tamiya connectors. I'm just going to connect that up now, and uh, we'll get this thing loaded up ready for a chrono test. All right, we have a chrono set up um, there. Let's. Put a few rounds in. 199, 274, 208, 274, 249, 279. I thought that 270 was a bit of an anomaly, but uh, it seems to be actually fairly consistent. 279 there, 287, 262. 274. I'm going to put a full auto burst in for why not? There was some 300s in there. Max of 300, min of 199. That was the first one out the out the barrel. So um, yeah, usually I when yeah it takes a bit to warm up. You know, lube up the barrel, all that sort of bizzo. Um, yeah, so average of 271. That's not too shabby. There was uh, there was one yeah a 304 over there so slight um, but for the most part I think that'd be field legal in most places and it um, packs quite a nice little punch. Oh there's a 307, 284, 240, 250, 225. It seems when you when you're running in full auto you get I think you get a slightly higher FPS because um, reasons yeah so packs a mean little punch oh there it is um, up to 300 it's not a bad little hitter um, one thing <laughs> that has happened is is this 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 was common on um, on early blasters uh, you get the uh, dust covers there that they would um, they would not click back easily once they're open. Although I think I've just solved that. There you go. Look at that solved. It seems that if it sits a little bit far forward or where you would expect that it should sit, it just pops open. But if you push it back a bit, it seems to stay in there. So whatevs. Only a cosmetic thing anyway. It does have a charging handle, but it's not a mag priming charging handle, it does move this little faux bolt in um, in the ejection port there. 
So, this is the mag, and when I pulled it out, I thought, oh cool, it's a Gen 8 mag. But it's not a Gen 8 mag, it is this weird thing that I believe is like a Wells proprietary thing. It looks like it sort of has throwbacks to the old days of the uh, mechanical Wells mag where they had the little tablet plate running in that notch to actually click the the wheel over to load the next gel uh, and they've got these tight packed um, terminals back there so uh, it's a Wells thing I guess I mean it is what it is, it is a Wells blaster so uses a Wells mag um, Maybe if you've got lots of Wells mags, that's a good thing. Me personally, I don't. I stick more more with the Gen 8 style of mag, so I don't really have a lot of Wells stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. If you need new mags for it, you'll have to get the specific Wells mags. Uh, let's take this thing apart and see what is inside, shall we? All right. I'll start by just moving that back out of the way and we'll um, loosen off these pins Let's see looks like it's uh, you know standard M4 type takedown uh, this in theory with the front pin removed we should be able to slide this um, upper ah, interesting the little bolt release there is catching so I might need to pop that out of the way or go up that is an interesting design Alright, on any other blaster, any other sort of M4 style thing, you knock this front pin out and then you can slide this whole upper section forward. And you'll notice here the um, bolt release, which is a, like it's, a, it's not a thing, it's a non-thing. It's just an, a pretty thing that sits there, it's not functioning in any way, it doesn't have a pivot through here it's just a piece of plastic that sits in there um, it hangs up right there on the upper when you try to slide it out and you can't pivot this away because it's not a pivot it doesn't move so getting the upper off it's it, this, this silly faux bolt release actually prevents you from getting the upper off like in any sort of easy fashion anyway uh, it just means I'm going to have to jiggle it around a bit and, and um, muck about with it. But um, but yeah, like all they would have had to do is just have a pivot through here or something just so that this could rock back and forth just enough to slide over the top of that and it would have been fine. Or change the moulding of this so that it was just flat all the way across so that that wouldn't hang up. Um, either way, makes tear down a bit of a pain. Alright, I don't like to do this sort of thing, but after a little bit of uh, a little bit of looking around and whatever, the only way that I can find to get this thing off is to stick a screwdriver under here. And it is this screwdriver is probably a bit big, I'll get a small one. Stick a screwdriver under here and sort of lever this up. It's so bad. I don't want to do this. Probably edit this off of the video because I'm because I'm embarrassed by the sheer Neanderthalness of this whole experience. But yeah. Screwdriver in under there. And then I can lift it up enough to slide it off. And look, here's the thing, right? It's just literally a piece of crappy plastic. There's... Oh, actually, no, it's metal. Okay, I take that back. It is a piece of crappy metal. Um, 
but well, yeah, it's a, it's a cast alloy thing. Okay, cool. So you're probably not going to break it by levering on it with a screwdriver. It's still a crap design and I hate it. But nonetheless, here is our mechanism. Let me zoom out a bit. Alright, so we have a T-piece here which very, very, very closely resembles a war interest T-piece. Um, very closely resembles a war interest T-piece. Uh, that's a Wells sort of looking nozzle, similar to... Oh yeah, alright I see. This is, um, looks like an alloy, alloy box. Bit of grease there and a ported cylinder, anodized blue, looks pretty nice. Um, this looks like a cast alloy box here. So, let's take this down further and see what, see what's really inside here. Oh, actually, while I'm here, I might take a quick look at this, um, this handguard. I'm not going to take this handguard off the um, the uh, upper because it's got this little proprietary nut type arrangement that you've got to unscrew there and then that should probably release it from the barrel nut. But uh, it does have a nice solid uh, barrel arrangement here so like the barrel is held solid in there. There is a gas tube in there as well which is um, useless but cute. Um, yeah, and it's it's all very nice and rigid in there as well. So that's um, that's got to be that's got to be good for holding the barrel nice and uh, rigid for accuracy. Now let's continue pulling this down. Um, I'll take this off next. Alright, I will continue with the teardown, I will take this rear pin out, uh, and I'll, um, I think I'll take the, uh, take the brace off, and get the stuff off the back of it, um, looks like an Allen screw holding this together, which is, um, which is different, they're usually, uh, Phillips head in the back there, so, um, just gotta get myself a really long Allen key. I'm gonna say it's like three or four millimeters. Okay, I've got my extremely long. This is really long. Extremely long Allen key now. Hopefully, I'm not in shot. Awkwardly undoing that. All right, cool. That worked. It was a um, four, four. Oh, that's interesting. So it seems that the oh wow, the little hole there that they give you is literally just, just wide enough to fit the co the connector through. If that was a Dean's connector or a, or a um, XT thirty sixty, um, that would have. That would have fit through, but um, these ones barely, barely, barely fit through. All right, so next, still got to get take this pin out. I'm um, having a bit of an issue with this pin because uh, it's spinning both sides, and I need to hold this side still somehow. Uh, bear with me. All right, I've just been sitting here trying to get this pin out this one here and uh, it's just spinning around uh, because there's nothing holding the other side and I can't because it's a, a domed head pin I can't like even if I hold my finger on it it just sort of spins but I did find uh, they have thought of this they have thought of you uh, they're not complete assholes so if you stick a little allen key or whatever down in there there is a hole that holds that pin will allow you to remove that screw. There we go. 
There it is. Um, for reference. That's cool. I'm glad they did that because that's like, that brings them up a notch after the, the shit they pulled with this one. Alright, continuing on. Um, this gearbox looks pretty nice from, from you know, so far, but uh, next. Gotta get the mag release out, motor out of the grip, and the uh, and this this pin. All right, this looks like a very small. Is this the same? What are the odds? What are the odds? The Allen key that I use to hold the pin is the same size as the mag release. I'm not even sure what that is. I think it's like a. Hmm. Let me measure that for you. Uh, 1.5. 1.5 millimeter Allen key. I was going to say, I think that's one of the Allen keys I use to adjust top ups. Just happened to be lying around. That is a cast alloy mag release, which is nice as well. Nice to have. And what's next? Punch this pin out. This way. Take a look. Try the other way just in case. Yep, the other way. So these pins, they've got a knurled end and they only like to go out one way. So it pays. If you're having trouble getting a pin out in one direction, it's probably the wrong direction. You're, um, Pays to try the other direction. Alright, I've got a uh, 2.5. Nope, it's not 2.5, it's a 2. 2 millimeter Allen key uh, for the bottom. Let's get this motor out. Of course, don't forget. To hold your thumb on it when you're uh, removing these screws because it is under pressure, under tension from that spring. Um, there we go. Short one in the front, long one in the back. We have what looks, oh, look at that. That wire came off really easily. I like to give these wires a little bit of a crimp with a pair of pliers or something, just so they don't come off too easily, because you don't want that sliding off. That red one comes off really easily, so I'll probably give that a bit of a crimp. Uh, metal pinion gear, that's handy. Good. Um, I don't know what motor this is, but it looks fairly standard looking. Uh, 480, 480 long, doesn't have any fancy magnets or anything in it, oh, okay, and Phillips heads, Phillips head screws in the pistol grip, holding the grip to the gearbox, to them. Both of them? No, one of them's still in a bit. They feel like an M3. And they look like an M3 as well. Alright, now let's get this box out of this receiver. That comes out really easily. That's one thing that V2 gearboxes do well, come out of receivers. That is a solid box. 
looks like it is cast cast aluminium. Um, does have the quick release spring guide in the back there. Solid bushes. And that's an alloy trigger as well. Um, they've done that standard wells thing of using the V2 box and then sitting the cylinder head back uh, like a millimetre or two uh, further back, having a slightly shorter uh, cylinder than a standard full cylinder just to bring this nozzle back enough to get that tapper clearance for, for a gel to feed as opposed to the other type of thing that V2 boxes propel. Um, Moulded terminal blocks screwed onto the side there, nice and solid. A decent, decent looking blaster. I could see metal gears inside there, which is cool. Uh, metal, metal gears, metal gearbox. Uh, they probably could have radius this a bit, but they didn't. But that's all right. Um, uh, six one half dozen the other. I think um, cast gearboxes. Whether they're radius or not, sometimes doesn't make much of a difference. But um, for the purposes of gel blasters under the 300 FPS region, I think it should be plentiful, plenty strong for that. Let's uh, let's just check that I'm still recording. <laughs> let's just. Sometimes I'll just go off on on little rants for a long time, and and my camera is timed out and I've been talking for like 20 minutes and uh, no longer recording. I'm just going to push on these uh, shafts just see what sort of... Man, they are they are tight. Someone told me that I may need to re-shim this box because the shimming uh, leaves a bit to be desired. Well, I gotta tell you, I don't think so. There's, there's barely any play in these gears at all. Looks good. Let's pull it apart. All right. Just before I take this apart, I will um quickly have a have a quick squeeze of the. Uh, Barrel inner diameter here. Uh, 7.5. Someone told me it was a tight bore. They lied. 7.5 mil ID. Uh, and it looks about 18 centimeters. I am going to get a tape measure and measure that though at my nearest convenience. Twenty. Twenty centimeters. Uh, I noticed the port as well. It's got a nice, uh, I'm gonna say, sixty percent port, roughly. Just, just taking a stab at the location of it. Could be fifty, depending on how much, how much this uh, piston takes up in here. Uh, maybe, maybe fifty. Sixty, fifty percent, roughly, give or take. Uh, without actually doing real measurements. Uh, so, for a 20 centimeter, 7.5, seems about on point. Seems to be about right. Um, let's crack this open now. Let's have a look what's in. Let's flick screws everywhere. Let's have a look what's inside there. Alright, I've got a, uh, what appears to be 6 millimeter Allen key to get the uh, spring out of the back of this. Whee! Spring retainer, left stage right. Uh, that is a decently sized spring. Now, um, 
I was doing some quick calculations uh, earlier on and uh, so this spring I calculated in roughly about an M90 from my calculations just based off the performance that we saw earlier on so um, decent decent spring let's pop the rest of this apart and see what's inside there I'm going to take it apart with a um, what is this a uh, number two Phillips excellent number two Phillips all around so I'm just going to bust all of them out my arm in front of the camera it is Sorry, didn't bring my transparent arms with me today. People actually make that comment. People make that comment on my videos a lot. Oh man, I can't see what you're doing because your hands are in the way. Sorry. It's kind of difficult enough to do things behind a tripod, around a tripod. Let alone also not obscuring what's going on. I'll do my best to get that shot for you. Doesn't always work out though. Alright, let's take a look inside. Pop this bad boy open. All right, there it is. Metal gears. Uh, sintered. I'm interested in this, uh, interested in this, uh, plunger. Let's take a look. Get this whole unit out of here. That's interesting. Not a great deal of seal. The um the nozzle has an O-ring in it, aluminium nozzle with aluminium O-ring. So that's probably quite a good seal. But um the O-ring on this piston head leaves a little bit to be desired. I think I might just change that out. Change it out. Or another one that I have, probably a green one, because that's what I got lots of. All right, so I got a green O-ring on there. Just check it out. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Compression is like worlds apart. Obviously, you don't get anything for that first half because of the port, but then as soon as you hit that port area, you can see it. As soon as you pass that port, it's like real nice compression. Um, that should, that should definitely um, help with the, uh, with the consistency, bring the consistency up. There's also a lot of grease on this. Uh, piston. I don't like greasy pistons. Uh, I prefer them to be oily because grease tends to block up the ports so you end up getting vacuum on the backstroke. So I'll clean that up a bit and put some oil in there instead. Alright, just give you a nice close look at this 
box now. I've um, oiled this up and it's like it's nice and solid now. It's got lots of compression. So that's good. I'll uh, get this tapper plate in back in there. Put it all back together. It looks nice and solid. This looks like a good solid gearbox. Um, yeah, I think this is. I think this is a pretty good value for money. This one. I, I've never. I, this is like. I know it might kind of surprise you to hear me say it, but this is. Aside from like the early stuff, this is my first Wells that I've pulled apart. Um, the uh, like I worked on the you know the Gen One stuff. Um, quite a bit, but uh, but yeah, I haven't really haven't really done much with them since since they uh, you know started to release good stuff. Oh, hang on, nozzle popped off. Always a good idea to make sure your nozzle is uh, seated on the tablet plate. That's a healthily strong return spring. He's got some. He's got some strength in that return spring. Let me tell you, it's strong. All right, so that's good. Nozzle's on there, good. All right, I want to pop this thing back together. Um. I, I usually when I'm putting things back together I don't bother filming too much because um, I mean I always say you can just watch the video backwards and and you'll you'll get the result the desired result but some people um, some people comment that uh, I should video the whole process of putting everything back together again as well um, It's, the video is going to be really long if I do that, but you know, um, if that's something that you want me to do, leave a comment. <laughs> Let me know if that's what you want me to do because I usually skip the uh, reassembly part because uh, it's I don't know, it's pretty mundane. It's the same thing over again. So, uh, that's. That's something you like, let me know. Otherwise, I am actually just going to skip to this thing being reassembled. Alright, got it back together now. And uh, got the new O-ring in there and everything. Let's see how she chronos. Um, I'm not expecting big gains in, in, uh, in FPS, but I am expecting, hopefully, better consistency. Let's uh, give it a blat. See how that comes up. Um, average of 292. Minimum of 279. A max of 323 was in there. Let's try some semi autos as well. 289. 284. 284. 284, 287, 295, 260, 298. I think I'm, am I shooting? I think I might be out. Oh no. Let's try it again. 292, 282, 282. Alright, very nice. That's, uh, uh, for what it's worth, I am using X-Force black label gels in that one um, because that's what I happen to use uh, different gels may perform differently as always check with, with uh, your blaster as to what it likes to eat alright well there it is well 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 the Wells Honey Badger uh, Solid little performer out of the box. Very good performance. Very high quality finish. High quality fixings. Um, 
Uh, yeah, probably my only gripes is the Wells Mag, which, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but, uh, if you've got a Wells, you've got a Wells, you've got to do that. And, um, this <laughs> silly, um, bolt release that doesn't allow you to easily remove the upper. Um, aside from that, like, this is, this is good gear. I, I like it. I definitely, um... I'd probably, I'd also probably maybe paint this, this, uh, handguard a bit more drab, personally. Uh, but, but yeah, man, other than that, that is a good, that is a good value out of the box performer. Um, what more can I say? That is nice. Wells have done a good job. Good job, Wells. It's not often you hear me say that. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit up um, uh, Gelsoft Warrior, Dally Dog, Vague Strategist. Subscribe to all those guys as well, because I am uh, I am also doing that thing with the XTP. If you know what I'm saying, um, I don't want to I don't want to say too much because um, people might watch this video well after the fact. Uh, so so, so um, yeah, but that is happening uh, at the moment. And uh, I've also got patches. Uh, you can message me on the Facebook uh, and we can organize patches if you're keen for patches. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Peace out.